Hey everyone, since this video ended up being so long, I wanted to do a quick summary in the beginning to go over the things that I did, what I changed, and what I found so you don't have to watch the entire video to get the useful content. First off, I took this lathe completely apart and made sure that every piece was cleaned, greased, and torqued properly. I also took some fine grit valve lapping compound and polished the journals on the compound and cross slides to remove any burrs or rough spots. Then followed it with some even finer polishing compound before greasing them to make it as smooth as possible. Knowing the two speed versions of this lathe have little transmissions in the headstock, I wanted to check inside and make sure there wasn't anything that should have had grease, but mostly find out how it is put together. As it turns out, it's just a tube between two bearings. I also made sure that every component had a liberal coating of spray grease on it to prevent rusting. One of the major things that I changed in this process was how the wiring was done. The control box, lathe frame, motor, safety cover, and rear cover were previously all connected by wires that were just long enough when everything is assembled. This led to frustrations when having to remove specific pieces for any reason. Most simply, I added some quick disconnects to the safety cover and did so in such a way that it could easily be bypassed if needed as the jaws will contact the cover when turning something with a wider diameter. Next, I moved the main power cord to the bottom of the control box and replaced the wire coming from the motor with one that has a plug on the end including a ground wire that attaches directly to the motor case. Finally, I installed the corresponding socket into the side of the control box so any of the pieces can easily and independently be removed. This will also make future plans for a new control box go smoother. Although I tried increasing the clearance, my new motor mount doesn't allow the bolt holes to line up on the rear cover, so I added some small magnets just to keep it in place. This is a minor issue since the new motor mount is significantly better and be sure to watch the making of it in my other videos. You may have also noticed that this chip tray is not original and something that I just bent out of a scrap piece of sheet metal I had laying around. I mounted it simply by tapping an existing hole in the carriage with an M6 thread. This works surprisingly well and the extension that hangs over the lead screw keeps a majority of the chips from getting caught in the threads. Lastly, I added a piece of shim steel to the front of the tailstock in order to help center it a bit more and a little bit of Loctite on the clamp nut should prevent it from loosening and contacting the um, frame of the lathe. My intention was to change the belt during this process as the old one is very near the end of its life, but replacement belts for this are hard to find and the one I ordered is a bit too long. It's possible that since this lathe had a broken motor mount when I first got it, the belt was damaged when I was trying to use it, and which led to its extremely short lifespan. Finally, this lathe never fails to be impressively cheap. First, the tail side lead screw pillow block bolts were barely finger tight, and it was completely dry and even had some surface rust. The head side lead screw pillow block was missing a bolt, which I found that the hole was either stripped or never tapped to begin with, so I had to tap it and find a bolt to put in there. In addition to that, the zerk fitting for adding grease is non-existent, so I need to find one of those. The clamps that hold the carriage to the ways were missing a set screw for adjusting the tightness of the carriage on the ways. At first, I thought it had vibrated out and was lost, but then found out it was intentionally missing because it interferes with the pinion side of the carriage gear. These clamps leave a lot to be desired in adjustability, smoothness, and rigidity, so an upcoming project will definitely be to redesign them. I also had to add a thin washer to separate and increase the space between the pinion gear and the rack gear, so it would turn much smoother. At this point, the rest of the video is the complete disassembly, cleaning, greasing, and reassembly of the lathe. It was a lot of work to put this together, so hopefully it's helpful, and I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoy it, and please like and subscribe. Thank you.